define the term projectile. So a projectile is an object that is moving under the influence of gravitational force only. 3.2.1 Calculate the maximum height above the ground that the ball will reach after it was thrown in the air. Let's go through our equation statement and hear what is going on. So we have a 25 gram ball that is thrown vertically upwards. The ball leaves the thrower's hand 1.3 meters above the ground with an initial velocity of 7.27 meters per second. On its way down, the ball bounces off a balcony at a velocity of 3 meters per second before being caught at its maximum height after the bounce. Ignore all effects of friction as well as any horizontal motion of the ball. Right, so we're looking for the maximum height above the ground that the ball will reach. As soon as I hear maximum height, I know that Vf is equal to 0. Our acceleration is constant. That is 9.8 meters per second squared upwards. What is Vi, the velocity at which the ball was thrown? Vi is 7.27. What else do we need? We're looking for delta y. This is our unknown. With these four variables, which equation can we use? We're going to use Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2a delta y. Vf is 0. What about Vi? Let's take up as positive. Common sense. So Vi will be positive 7.27 squared plus 2 multiplied by our acceleration. If we're taking up as positive, then our acceleration will be minus 9.8 multiplied by delta y, what we are interested in. So we're going to have minus 7.27 squared being equal to minus 19.6 delta y. We just need to divide both sides by minus 19.6. If we go ahead and do that, we're going to have delta y being equal to 2.7 meters. This is the displacement of the ball after it was thrown vertically upwards. But we want the height above the ground. So our height will be equal to 1.3. It was projected 1.3 meters above the ground, plus its displacement after it was projected, 2.7. This is equal to 4 meters. That is the answer to 3.2.1. So this maximum height up here is 4 meters. Let's do 3.2.2. So 3.2.2, the time that the ball takes until it bounces on the balcony for the first time. So this is where it bounces on the balcony. We can find the time from the point it was projected until the maximum height. And then we can find the time from maximum height until it bounces off the balcony and add those two times. That will give us the time that the ball takes until it bounces on the balcony. Let's calculate the time it takes to reach our maximum height. So what variables do we have? We have Vi, obviously, 7.27. I don't even know which equation I'm going to use, but I know that after writing the variables down, the equation is going to present itself. So Vi is 7.27. Vf is equal to 0. I have my acceleration, that is 9.8. I'm looking for delta t. It will be straightforward which equation we can use if we have these variables. Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. Vf is 0. Vi, that is 7.27, plus the acceleration minus 9.8 multiplied by delta T. If we make delta T the subject of the formula, we're going to get minus 7.27 divided by minus 9.8. That will give you 0.742. Two seconds. That is the time it takes the ball to reach the maximum height. Now we need the time from maximum height until it bounces off the balcony. Well, from the maximum height until the balcony, we have a displacement which is equal to height final 3.2 minus the initial which is 4. This is equal to minus 0 0.8 meters. This is our displacement from maximum height until the balcony. 
What else do we have? We have VI. We know that VI is zero, zero meters per second. What else do we have? We have the acceleration, obviously, that is 9.8 meters per second squared. And what we're looking for is the time. With these four variables, which equation can we use? Delta Y is equals to VI delta T plus a half acceleration delta T squared. So delta Y minus 0 0.8 is equals to VI is 0. So this term is going to fall away. We are only left with a half our acceleration minus 9.8 delta T squared. So delta T will be equals to the square root of minus 0 0.8 divided by a half multiplied by minus 9.8 everything to the power f. This is one term we need to show that delta T will be equals to 0 0.404 seconds. So our total time will be equals to 0 0.404 plus 0 0.742 plus 0 0.742 this is 1.15 seconds let's do the last question 3.3 .3. draw a sketch graph of the displacement of the ball for the entire motion use the ground as the reference point so let's go ahead and sketch our axis we have the y axis and we have the x axis on the x axis we have the time in seconds and on the y axis we have the displacement in meters we're supposed to sketch the graph of the displacement of the ball for the entire motion so we start 5.3 meters above the ground so let's start there and then we go to a maximum height of 4 meters above the ground we bounce off the balcony which is 3.2 meters above the ground and we go to a new maximum height, which is slightly below the initial maximum height, as we can see on the sketch. What do we need to indicate? The height from which the ball is released. We have shown that it's 1.3, the maximum height that the ball reaches. Uh, that is 4 meters, so let's show that. And then the height of the balcony, that is 3.2, somewhere there. Uh, what else? The time it takes to bounce on the balcony, 1.15.